start with content. So in leveraging content, the idea here is that uh, what you want to create, curate, and crowdsource content that helps your customer solve a problem or help them achieve their, their goals. One of the mistakes that startup companies make in marketing is that they think that they want to market their product. The problem is that the customer is not interested in your product. The customer has a problem to solve. So for example, let's say that you've created a, uh, a, a solution like one of the startups I'm working with has created a solution to do virtual ethnography, right? So virtual ethnography means that they can actually record, uh, uh, help you interact with live video remotely. And, and this might be a shopper in a store uh, doing shopping in Beijing and they're wearing a smart glass and you're able to see the video through their eyes and you're able to interact with them or ask questions. So that's basically the, the idea, okay? So now, instead of saying, here's my great product, what you might talk about there is, uh, what is happening with ethnography? Why is ethnography important? Why is observational research important? And by the way, what are the limitations of ethnography? Uh, the fact that it doesn't scale, the fact that it's expensive, the fact that it's time consuming, and uh, what are some of the developments or best practices in ethnography? What kinds of problems can you solve using this, this uh, research approach? You know, it might be a shopper study, it might be a study of salespeople, it might be a service personnel that you might want to, 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 to use. So basically, what you wanna do always is ask yourself, what is the problem that I'm solving for customer? What is the passion that or pain point that I'm addressing? And this is the content that you want to share on your website, in a blog, in an email newsletter, in infographics, in webinars. And what is really important here is that your content needs to be relevant. It needs to be relevant for customers. It needs to be useful for them and it needs to be timely. Let me give you a quick example to illustrate this idea of sort of relevance of content. I went to a, a, a naturopath, you know, this is an, an alternative medicine practitioner. And uh, because I was trying to improve my diet and I was trying to improve, uh, you know, uh, lose some weight. So, uh, so he gave me some advice, he gave me some inputs and he gave me some supplements and so on. But when I came back a week later, I got an email from him. And the email, and you know what I do with most emails, I do delete, 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 because you know there's a lot of garbage coming at you in your email. So, so I was gonna hit the delete button when the subject line caught my eye. And the subject line said, a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. So I'm like, wait a minute, what, 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 what is he saying here? Because I thought all calories were alike. It's how many calories you consume. And if you want to diet, you reduce the amount of calories that you consume. Uh, no. So as I read through the email, it said um, that what you need to understand is the glycemic index of the foods that you eat. And the glycemic index is basically how efficiently that food is converted into glucose and it goes into the bloodstream. So foods with high glycemic index are absorbed more quickly and may contribute greater to, you know, in a, more greatly to fat formation and so on. So for example, if you're eating breakfast in the morning, and you eat cornflakes. Cornflakes have a very high glycemic index. They're almost like eating glucose. But on the other hand, if you eat oatmeal or you have bran cereal, it has a lower glycemic index. Similarly, in fruit, you know, and a, a cantaloupe or or or, or a uh, dates have very very high glycemic index. But berries and cherries have lower glycemic index. So the point he was making is that by making simple substitution in food, where you're you're going to still eat fruit, you're going to still eat cereal, but make choose foods with lower glycemic index, you are going to actually be able to lose weight. And I followed that simple advice and I lost five pounds in three months. So that's an example of content that is relevant. So, okay, maybe I'm trying to sell a supplement or I'm trying to sell a diet plan, but first give me some useful information. And that is my next bullet point here is don't lead with your product, lead with the story. Speak to a pain point or a passion point of the customer. So understand what is the issue that they're dealing with or the problem that they're dealing with and make sure that this problem that they're dealing with connects with your brand story. So you need to connect customer motivations with, the, with your brand and your value proposition through the content. So that is the idea of leveraging content. Let me, let me give you a couple of examples about sort of, you know, the idea of the product and the story, the difference between the product and the story. 
So what I have on the left side of this is uh, actually my sister's startup company. And uh, what she does is she uh, makes natural uh, food and cosmetics in Kerala, in India. And, uh, and she sources, she grows all this stuff herself in her farm. So what you see here is a, a product that she has, which is called Kerala turmeric. Now this turmeric is very different from the traditional turmeric. It is called Aleppi finger turmeric. It's a very special kind of turmeric as you see here. And this turmeric requires a lot of effort to grow. The yield is very low, but what happens with this turmeric as you see at the bottom is that the curcumin content, which is the active ingredient in turmeric that is an anti uh, inflammatory and it's also antiseptic. It has five times or four times the curcumin content that you find uh, relative to the turmeric you can buy in the store. So when she is selling this product, my advice to her was, I said, tell the story behind this product, you know, because uh, show me your farm, show me how you're harvesting, show me how you're planting. Like that photograph that you see, that is actually her harvesting the turmeric that she planted herself. Fascinating story, because remember, sometimes customers want to buy a story, not just a product. On the right hand side, you see another example of an Indian entrepreneur. Well, actually, she is mixed Indian and French, and I met her a couple of months ago. Maya came out and what Maya has done is that she grew up in South India and she used to visit her grandmother sort of every month. She now lives in the US, but every month when she every year when she would go back to her grandmother's, they would cook up some very traditional South Indian recipes. So she learned from there and now she started a fine foods company called Maya Kemal and she's online. She's in, uh, you know, uh, Trader Joe's. She's in uh, Whole Foods. And what, but what she does there is she actually talks to you about the heritage, where her, uh, you know, what her heritage is and what the history of South Indian cooking is, what, how they use spices. And also very importantly, as you see here, recipes and ideas, cooking ideas and cooking tips. So it's not just about selling her products, but it's really telling the story. So that is the idea of content marketing. Make sure that you're telling the story behind your product. The story, by the way, it may not be a product story. A story may be a story related to your origin. You know, it may be like how the company was founded. For example, we all, we've all heard the Amazon founder story of how Jeff Bezos got in his car and drove across the from the East Coast to the West Coast and came to Seattle, a small little, started a small little company called Amazon. You know, so, so think about stories that you can tell and content that you can create.